any number of things can affect you but you get the choice to have any number of things direct you whether your affectation is from circumstances meaning that you let other things outside of yourself dictate who you are what you are or how you react to them really it's your choice you've been given freedom from the outside influences to cause you to sin to cause you to be misdirected to cause you to be deceived because you've been given the Holy Spirit now if you have not received the Holy Spirit you should ask and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit you can just say God fill me with your Holy Spirit take not thy Holy Spirit from me God give me the promise of the comfort and because God is faithful and we're not he'll give him to you and he will lead you into all truth he will reveal to you the things that Jesus said he will direct your life he will affect your life in a way that turns you from the world and its ways to look up and see God and his ways you see it's easy to be religious but it's not the same thing as being spiritually born of those things that God wants to place inside you because we're not spiritualists that follow only the things of the Spirit but we are spiritually directed that we should have God's Holy Spirit living inside us causing us to direct us causing us to be morphed so to speak from a physical being into a spiritual being God one day will take this flesh and this body we live in this physical body which is corruption and he will change the corruption into incorruption he will cause a newness a born again of the Spirit of God to happen to us so that we would inhabit a spiritual body that's been prepared for us as opposed to a physical body which is prepared for the earth the earth and the heavens thereof will pass away one day and so too will this body of flesh that's been created from the dust and to the dust it must return so the direction that we're meant to go is always upward and not downward we're not meant to be a part of that which is passing away but we're meant to be a part of that which will live day to day that will continually exist in the now the present that always is aware of today hearing his voice today hardening on our hearts today walking with God today being faithful today is the day that you choose which way you will go whether it'll be an affectation something that affects you and points you in a wrong direction or whether you'll be given direction <laughs> affectation direction well, I had to think of a directation and there is no directation as a word but as opposed to the affectation you will be given inspiration see I knew it'd come back to me <laughs> Holy Spirit need another shot of Pepsi but that as opposed to the affectation of the world influencing you you'll be given inspiration which comes from the inside out because the Holy Spirit who has come as a earnest or has been placed inside you is causing you to be changed from glory to glory into the image of the incorruptible Son of God and that's really what you should be led today by doesn't mean you will be it means you should be you can make those choices to be affected by the world uh, just like a disease infects you if you let the world come inside you you'll be infected with the world and its ways but if you're inspired you don't have to be <laughs> affected or infected with the world but you can rather affect and direct those around you by simply having that light that you are that salt that you become that very nature of God in the midst of a place that may not know God or people that may not understand him in a way that you will be suddenly the son of God on the spot you will be the inspiration that God has said light springs forth out of darkness you'll be the one 
that God has decided to use as his son. And he will choose you this day to inspire others in the way that they should go. So really, you can choose to be either a detriment or a benefit to those all around you simply by walking in the way that God would have you to go and being that which God wants you to be. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Unspeakable and full of joy. Sorrowful, yeah, but always rejoicing. Exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. We glory in tribulations. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. These things... I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. As the sufferings of Jesus abound in us, so our consolation also abounds in Jesus by him. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. When we mistake the promise for the person giving the promise, we go the way of religious ideas that want to separate the giver from the gift. When we <clears throat> aren't so much admiring or having a conversation with the person giving what we're enjoying, then we get distracted by what we got rather than what we're being given. And you see, it's not so much the present that is the important thing sometimes when you get something from someone. But the person who gave it to you, how much more so when you're in their presence that you enjoy and love them for all that they've given you. We have a tendency to take for granted life, the way we live, how we live, and what we live. Because it happens anyways, we think it's going to go on the same way until the day we die and then suddenly we're caught as it were in a surprise we didn't end our existence but it goes on in a spiritual realm a dimension we didn't know about something we weren't aware of <clears throat> a way of living beyond death and without there being someone who could tell us about that that says I have been there I know I'm telling you about it then we really would go on taking for granted in a lot of ways, religious life as opposed to personal development. You see, you can't take hell into heaven and you can't take your sin with you. You need to be cleansed from it so that you can be in the same presence of a sinless existence as opposed to a sinful life. And the life that you're living today has sin in it. You are infected with a terminal condition that will cause you to perish and to die. Your corruption will finally corrupt you eventually. But because you've been given incorruption inside, the cure is at work in you both to do and to will of God's good pleasure, which is to heal you, to help you, to restore you, and to cause you to come into fellowship or to cause you to come into awareness that God is here, that God speaks to you, that you can know God, that you can walk, talk, and live with God in His kingdom, in His presence, in the place of the dimension past death that you're going to, in the awareness that there's more to life than what you're living in the physical. There's a spiritual life yet to be experienced. And when you know that, when you grow into that, you become aware of the importance of today. You become knowledgeable of the fact of the things you say, the way you live, the thoughts you have are so important for you to prepare yourself for the day you're going to enter into heaven.
that you're going to step out of physical life that you're going to move into a spiritual dimension that you have no concept of that should you bring with you that sinfulness nature that you have you would be consumed immediately as though by a burning fire you would have to be placed far away from the intensity of the love that God is for God is love and you would be like a matchstick that's placed right next to a flame and poof it's consumed and that's how God is a consuming fire the fire of the purity of his love would consume you completely unless your nature is changed from the matchstick into a wick full of oil that can burn brightly you are the one God wants to talk to but you are also the one that has to be distant from God or close depending upon your nature not his his is one of love yours is one of consummation are you being consumed by the oil that God has given you of his Holy Spirit today and walking in the newness of life in the fullness of his grace and mercy fullness of joy completeness of peace the overwhelming intensity of his love or are you just discovering that you really have a lot of sin in your life and it needs to be removed I pray that God would take you today to that place of being consumed by his love to be overwhelmed by his grace to be brought to a state of peace that you could be still and know the living God that's my joy <laughs> in every day that I live for I know that the day shall come when I no longer talk about the Son but he will be made aware by his very presence of standing in front of us and we will see him face to face isn't that what you really want to see Jesus today